So remember, the Fed has these toolkits that it uses, and traditionally it uses interest rates in order to control the flow of money, right? If they make money easier to get a hold of, people will spend it. If they make it more expensive to use, then people will hold on to it. And that's kind of how they've done it to date. Now, for, you know, up until the last Great Recession around 2008, they never used this other tool, which has gotten the name called quantitative easing. Uh, and, you know, I think the Fed balance sheet up until that point was something like $700 billion, which is like nothing compared to where it is at $9 trillion right now. Um, but, you know, during the Great Recession, a lot of the European central banks went the route of doing negative interest rates. That meant they were actually paying people to use money. Um, and our Fed decided that that was not going to be a smart policy, that it was actually better to not keep your money in the bank. They were actually paying you to take your money out of the bank. That's what a lot of the European banks were doing. That's whenever you hear the word negative interest rates, that's what they're doing. They're basically saying, we're going to give you money um, and if you store it in the bank, we're actually going to charge you. We're not going to give you interest. We're going to charge you for putting your money in the bank. We didn't go that way. Instead, what we started to do in order to uh, keep things flowing, right? When you think about uh, an investor, um, a financial planner for you, they typically like to put half of your money, if you think about it, into like bonds, which are very secure and half of your money into stocks. That's always been the gameplay for a traditional financial planner for people's investment dollars. When you start having the Fed buy bonds, and that's what they did, they started to buy very secure treasury bonds, and they started to buy uh, very secure, like the best mortgage bonds, right? And by doing that, they made bonds really like not good at giving interest, right? They made the bonds by them buying them. There was such like this demand by the, by the federal reserve for the bonds that they did started to not pay any interest rates. And so that caused the, the financial planners to kind of skew people's portfolios and all of this extra money that would have gone into bonds was now going into more riskier investments like stocks. And that explains why Wall Street's at these all-time highs. I mean, ever since 2008, you know, the Dow has gone from like 8,000 up to 28,000. It's gotten like a, a three or four-fold increase. And that's because all this money that the Fed is putting into bonds is causing regular investors to be attracted to thing and it's gotten so crazy so you can look at that they continued that bond buying after the um after the great recession until about 2014 where they finally uh cut off the spigot and then when they said they were going to start to buy things back and when they were going to start to get rid of this cash they were going to you know, sell these bonds and sell these mortgage stuff. They were going to put them back out on the market. Wall Street freaked. And so the Fed basically marked time for three years or so until a lot of those treasuries started to come to maturity, right? When you buy a treasury bond, uh, they have a maturity date. And so they were buying a lot of three and five year treasury bonds. They started to mature. And so as they mature, they started to cash them out. And that was working until um, you know they started to worry that the economy was slowing too much. Uh, that was under the Trump administration. And so they started to do just some gentle buying again of these securities to get people back interested in more risky investments. And then, of course, COVID hit. And as soon as COVID hit, they decided to even go a little bit more aggressive. Instead of the best treasury bonds and instead of the best mortgage bonds, they started to buy corporate bonds, still the highest class, but they started to buy a whole bunch of other types of bonds. Again, getting people attracted towards those more risky investments because bonds were just not paying off because bonds were basically being bought by the Fed, you know, by this created money. And they've continued that buying process up to the point where now the Fed owns $9 trillion worth of these bonds. 
But what they've noticed, and you might remember, Sip, we talked, I think it was around show 10. I know we're on show 21 now, but around show 10, we talked about these SPOQ, the, the SPACs. And we also were talking about NFTs and crypto. I mean, at this point, there is so much money and the traditional investments are so not worth anything. Nobody's interested in them that all this spare money that usually is split between bonds and more risky investments, we're seeing, you know, the Fed is talking about, hey, man, this NFT thing, the crypto, which has no backing whatsoever. These are really risky uh, investments. We see this real estate. Um, people are investing in real estate like there's no tomorrow and they're buying like a whole bunch of crappy, you know, all this extra money is now starting to go more than just into the, you know, secure, you know, more secure, risky investments. And it's going into crazy stuff. The the SPACs that we were talking about and the Fed and the Treasury Department are getting very worried. So they've been talking about not only stopping it, but being way more aggressive than they were a decade ago at selling those things back to get people to stop uh, investing their money into these really, really speculative uh, things. The, the government's worried. And so I wouldn't be surprised if at this next Fed meeting, uh, I wouldn't even, I, I, there's a slim chance that the Fed may, especially because of what's happening with the Ukraine, surprise us and not move the interest rate. We'll see. Uh, otherwise, it's probably going to be the quarter point. But I am going to be reading in between the lines about this quantitative easing to see if, number one, they stop it, stop buying, and number two, issue some sort of timeline for selling back. Because I have a feeling that by 2030, you know, in just a short amount of time, they're going to want to get away, get a, get get rid of about a third to even half of this $9 trillion, bring us back to this level, I think. Um, so that would be very significant. And that means that, man, you better be brushed up on shorting and buying your put options because um, if you're just all about going long and buying things like crypto, buying things like re real estate, buying NFTs, I think you're going to be on the losing side of the equation.